recording. So I need to get this size piece of paper from my resource file into my model. So that's my first thing. So that's DC. That gives me access to my resource file from this file. So I'm in my in my pergola file. But because I wrote design center, it gives me access to all the open drawings. And I want to find my layouts because those are my pieces of paper. And I'm going to just, I hold my mouse down to click on it. And I bring it in and I let it go. And lo and behold, it's now in, <laughs> it's in my pergola one. Now the problem is, this is huge. It's 12 feet. And this is only 17 inches. So I need a small view. I need to shrink. I need to shrink this thing down to get it to fit, right? Well, how do I shrink it down? Well, when I'm on the layout, I get a layout button. And the layout button says, you can make a view and you can scale that view to fit. So let me make a rectangular view. And I've just shrunk that down. It's still big in reality. But on my piece of paper now it fits. So that's really cool. I, I scaled it down to fit on my piece of paper. Problem is... I need to scale it to a ratio that's kind of normal. If I click on the viewport, down in the lower right, it tells me I have a scale of 0.034. And that doesn't make sense at all. So I need a common scale. That's not right. That looks pretty good. It gives me room. To write around it and it's big enough. Maybe I can even go more. These are common. That looks a little too big. So I just poke around until I find one that's normal. It's on the list. It's normal. And it gives me room for my, my stuff to write. And then this is what I went over with uh, Stephen this morning. I click this lock button so I don't accidentally change that. Now what's cool is when I'm on my layout, I've got a piece of paper. There's like a piece of tracing paper over it and I'm gonna write on my piece of paper. Now I can, take my paper away and touch the model, but I do everything on the piece of paper. So now I want to put a dimension on there. And on this one, it was sort of architectural. Okay, but maybe I want it to be fractional inches or something like that. I have to know what style I want. Let me go back to the design center and now look at my dim styles. There's architectural, but there's a bunch of them. Different scale factors. Now here's the critical part. I'm going to draw on the piece of paper. And I'm going to print my piece of paper the size of my piece of paper. So my dimensions should be as written on the piece of paper, scale factor one. Because I'm writing on my piece of paper. If I do fractional, it should also be scale factor one. And then you pick what you want it to be. If I do fractional, 
and tell it what layer to use. If I pick fractional, it'll be fractions of an inch. And if, then if I change it to architectural, it'll change it again. Now, here's the tricky part. If I go from here to here, oh, it caught it. That is amazing. It usually won't catch it for me. Let's see. So, so that did it. Oh, here, I'll go from here. See how that says three inches? <laughs> Isn't that weird? Why did it do that? Even if I make it architectural. Three inches. What's the matter? Well, this is on my piece of paper. And I didn't tell it to go find a piece of my model. So if I go from dimension line to dimension line, it's going to measure it on my piece of paper. I need to actually find the dimension on my model. And that's just going to be sloppy. Okay, does that help answer that? Did I touch one of the things that might have been what the problem was? Okay, so... If you tell yourself to get into the piece of into the model, it's like uh, uh, who knows where it is. So that can be part of it. If it goes away for any reason, you can you can reinsert that block. Watch it. Yeah, watch this. Copy to the clipboard from one, paste. So there's all sorts of different ways to do it. So if it went away, if it went away, you can do that. Now, here's the other thing. If I want to put another one in, watch, I'm going to try to put another one in it is I'm going to go to my design center and I'm going to try to put another one in duplicate ah. you have to change the name now I can put it in it can't have layouts can't have two layouts with the same name. Now, what I did when when I did these in my examples, I did right because I tend to. I make a copy because in general, I've got everything filled out here and I'm just going to change my sheet number. And so, in general, my practice is to make a copy. And see how it says there's number one and number two? And I just move it, and then I rename one. So, 
Well, there we go. That's all those little dinky dorky things that are always a problem. <laughs> do, you, do you think that that's what the, the issue was? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yep. So there we go. To delete it. Yeah. So, like, if you have. Ooh, that can be hard. Um, well, there's the purge command. And if it has not been used yet, you'll be able to purge some things with the purge command. But it's pretty, it's pretty persnickety. If it thinks that you've touched this in any way before, it may not let you get rid of it. But the... Right. Yeah, it can get, it can get a little bit big, can't it? Um, and I'm not sure if you can create folders in here. Uh, I don't think so. What many, many people do is they make their tool palettes and put their favorite stuff on tool palettes. And so you can customize your tool palettes, delete palettes, make new palettes. More people do this when they have something that they just always use than the design center. I I just see in industry more people do a tool palette because you know there's there's commands you can put on the tool palette as well as things that you can put on the tool palette. And you can create your own custom tool palette. Correct. Okay, so hold on a sec. That's um, uh, custom user interface, CUI. I think that that's where you're going to go. I don't, I, what's that? Yeah, if you have it on a tool palette because your tool palettes are in here too. Um, your tool palettes are somewhere in here. Yeah, I don't do this too much because, um, we usually figure that most of this, uh, maybe it's in menus. Hold on a sec. No, see, you can also set up your own menus and you can set up your own toolbars. So, um, and, and and what we figure is usually when um, a person has been hired, then this will be set up for them. You just have to know how to get to it, <laughs> right? You're not usually the one that's doing it. Um, so I don't remember where the tool palettes are all held and stuff, but. You can look around at CUI, Custom User Interface, and you can save that like to a USB and and just plug your USB in and pull it up. Say that's the one I want to use. So so we have done that. Look at this. Partial customization. Ah, look at all this stuff. It's a it's quite a fancy program. Okay, any other, these are all cool things. Any other good questions? Okay, well, have fun just 
drawing stuff, just to reiterate, you're going to pick one of the um, one of the things to do. You'll choose Archi and even in architectural, you'll pick one of the things to do. You can do this one, or you can do this one, or you can do this one. I just open it up so that you can get out of this class what really drives your educational needs forward. Okie doke. There you go. All right. Well, then I'll see you guys tomorrow and uh, enjoy. We'll see you later.